Hey everybody, welcome to the Zero to Profits with a new Shopify store in 2018 webinar. We're going to couple, cover a couple things tonight, but as usual, first things first, can you hear me and can you see my screen? Give me a one in the old Q&A box there in the chat box if you guys can hear me and see my screen. Okay, we're all good then. Awesome, Michael, Marion, another Michael. Bernie, Jeff, cool. Good stuff. We got a good turnout tonight, so that's awesome. Second thing, I love to do this, as you guys know, where are you located? So tell me where on the globe you are. We usually have people around the world. Some people get up early, some people uh, watch the replay, but we've had like Australia, we've had um, Singapore, we've had all over the place. Israel, so where are you from? Tell me where. So we got a lot of US people, so we got San Diego, Barrow Beach, uh, San Antonio, Hartford, uh, Brunei. Sorry, where's Brunei? I should know this. I didn't do too uh, well in, fan, in geography. New York, awesome. All right, so we do have people all around, which is cool. Good stuff, so let's dive right in here. One thing I wanna tell you um, with, oh, near Singapore, okay. That's why I recognize that, awesome, Japan, Sweet. Yeah, so there are people on here from around the globe, which is awesome. That's why I love these webinars, because we can reach everybody all in one shot. And what I like to do with my webinars is uh, I, I like to pack them with value as much as possible. And I've tweaked this so that you're not hearing my uh, sob story as much. Um, I actually had a person call me out on that on my one of my YouTube videos. He told me he didn't want to hear it. And uh, so I changed my whole webinar because I'm like, yeah, that makes sense. I don't really like hearing it either. But so again, thank you for coming on. I appreciate you taking time out of your day or night here in uh, London, Ontario, Canada. It is nine o'clock PM. Uh, so what are we doing? Well, basically we're gonna teach you how to go from zero to profits with a new Shopify store in 2018. A lot has changed, a lot. Um, from when I started doing this 11 years ago, a ton has changed, but even over the past six months, um, Facebook has changed quite a bit. Their ad platform has gone through so many updates and so many algorithm changes and so many things behind the scenes that stuff that used to work uh, really well just seems to flounder a little bit now. So what I do whenever that happens is I start, go back to the lab, start with my experiments, start figuring things out, figure out what works, what doesn't, use all the tools and resources I have, and put it together and you know most of my experience exper experiments fail but the ones that do work are the ones that i i end up teaching people so i teach people one-on-one -on -one, and i also do it in a group format so why why do this well like i said what worked six months ago might not work today which is not good but that's the way it goes online the only guarantee online is that things will change and we have to adapt in order to become profitable and maintain our profitability. Okay, so why a new store? Well, that's one change, right? Niche, and I say niche, some people say niche. I'm Canadian. If you have a general store, um, that's fine. You can pick the best niche from it and create a new store, but I think niche is the key now more than anything, um, not just for the Facebook ad side, but for the follow-up side. Um, there's a whole back-end system that is very simple when you have a niche store. So if I, I, I do have a general store and I've got like probably 10 or 12 different niches on it and my backend email system is complex and confusing because I have to filter people onto the right list and make sure I'm showing them uh, that filter part is a difficult part and there's some expensive programs I can do it. But when you go with a program or uh, sorry, a niche on your store from the start, it really simplifies things. Um, now you'll find out in a minute too why we need that for Facebook ads because there's a big change that happened there. So we'll see that too. It works well. Uh, I'll tell you more in this webinar about uh, what the changes are and what we need to do to profit. So it does sound like a lot of work because you're constantly, well, I, me anyway, I'm constantly experimenting. So what I do is I see things that are working or people say they're working in a group, say on Facebook, well, I'll take that and I'll run my own experiments and I'll add my own tweaks to it and my own little twists. And then I develop systems. That's how systems are developed. Guys go out and they experiment and they just basically, uh, I write all my down too. That way I know what I've done. And um, that allows me to 
jump into any any kind of product I want and make it profitable, and any kind of store I want and make it profitable. So I think one part too that people skip a lot is preparation. It's a huge part of your success. Okay, preparation is key. Um, so don't worry. Like if you're if you're thinking this, like I don't even know where to, what to do or where to start. Just remember this next slide. Okay, where there's a will, there's a way. I'm the will, so there is a way. I love this one. And if you do stay in the end, I do have something special for you. But uh, so real quick, I always say this, why would I share this? Why not just keep all this to myself? I mean, if I have systems figured out, if I've done my experiments, why would I share this and create more competition? Well, odds are you're not going to be in the same niches as me. There's so many out there. There's, there's literally thousands and thousands of choices that you can do. So um, that's one reason. The other one is uh, we live a kind of isolated life. So I've been working for myself online for 11 years now, and there's more to life than sitting alone on your computer making money. There really is. Helping others succeed is almost more rewarding. So I always show um, a couple of screenshots here of people I've helped in the past. So uh, Michael here uh, wanted to share a milestone. He hit 10,000 revenue. Most of it was made in the last 28 days. This was a while back. But he bought one of my courses. He said, special thanks to Will. Launched my first campaign in July after watching the GB course that he put together. Stuff works. So he offers some tips. And he said, uh, this is the key. If you do not give up for long enough, you win. So he's doing way bigger numbers than that now. But uh, here's another one from Ben. Hit 1,000 sales, which is awesome. Uh, bought the course late July again. Launched first campaign two months ago. My will system works. You just need to trust the process, put in the work. And then Cedric, uh, this is one of my favorite ones, my favorite testimonials that he put up. Um, to everyone in the group, that's my free group. I highly, highly recommend. I think he meant me, <laughs> Will, <laughs> the Gear Bubble course. I failed at Facebook ads for three years, purchased so many courses, I can tell the good from the bad. I purchased a course a couple months ago, and as of today, had his first uh, $1,000 day. So he says, don't ask for screenshots because you wouldn't believe them right? A lot of people fake screenshots online. Um, so he said, for the first time, I decided not to second guess him, do exactly what he's teaching, whether it makes sense to me or not. I'm not an affiliate. I don't sell necklaces on Gearbubble. That's what the course was. Then he says, this is the best course uh, I've seen so far. He's not selling bullshit because I know other high earners and he is on the same page with them. Will's just a better teacher. So I love that. So that's why I do it. Whenever I get those posted in my group or sent or emailed to me or whatever, I love them. The, those motivate me to do more and to help more people. So that's why I do it. Um, that's why I put together this webinar because I want to help more people too. Okay. Um, and I also have other motivations, of course, but more on that later. So time for the intro and I've learned to keep this short and sweet. So who am I? Most of you know me already, but some may not. This is a standard. Uh, that's me. That's my mug. Um, I've got five daughters. They're all age names. Live on London, Ontario, Canada, two hours from Toronto, two hours from Detroit. I love helping people, okay? The founder of ppccoach.com years and years ago, well, 2007 is when I launched it. And I've trained well over 10,000 online marketers since then. And I actually started in 2005 online. So I would be uh, pretty much a veteran in this online advertising world, okay? Um, I've had some big payouts, lots of big payouts. This is one of my oldest big payouts that I actually have a picture of because it's a check. Now they all come through PayPal or they come direct to my bank through um, direct deposit. So I love this one because um, it's just a picture of my first one, my first big check in November 23rd, 2005. And the amount back then, I mean, it's hard to see, but it's 17,489.53 US, so I'm Canadian. So I actually get like a 20 or 30% bump when I convert it from US to Canadian. And back then, we didn't have phones, so we didn't have high-resolution cameras to take that with. So I think this one was actually taken on a, um, a like camera with film in it that you actually, back in the day, you had to go develop. Crazy. So this was generated doing secured loan leads using Google AdWords, and I would sell them to banks and loan companies in the UK. Now, how the heck would I learn that? Well, I found a mentor, and he taught me how to do it. And then he actually had a company that was uh, kind of the, the middleman. So he benefited because he would show me how to do it. I benefited because I got paid commission. Everybody benefited. The banks benefited because I got more business. So now, I mean, my focus is Facebook ads, but I am getting back into Google AdWords, the shopping network and stuff like that too now too. Um, I never say no to a traffic source. I'll always come back to them. So after that check, 
um, I remember I was working as a uh, in TD Ameritrade, do working the phones, and I would take stock and option orders, and I, I really didn't like my job. It was awful. I was just a phone monkey. So after that check, uh, I'd been doing this on the side, and I said to the weirdest thing to my wife. I actually said this. Uh, we're sitting around the table, eating dinner. She's pregnant with my third daughter, and we're in, we're in our little townhouse. And it was three bedrooms, and now we had four people coming in our family. We didn't have enough room. I mean, we could have doubled up the kids, but I just I I've never been a good employee. Um, I've always wanted to work for myself. So back then, I finally said, you know, I, I think I figured this out. I showed her the check. And then I said, I have to quit my job to start making money. And you don't really hear people say that too often, but that is exactly what I said. And she looked at me like I was from Mars. And uh, then she realized, well, no, if he's saying this, and he's pretty serious, and he's got something planned. So after a little uh, bit more discussion, she agreed. And um, I did. I, I quit my job. Uh, my last shift was <laughs> New Year's, December 31st, 2006. So I was working the graveyard shift at a TD Ameritrade because during the evening, nobody called to do stock and option orders. They only called when the market was open. So it was awesome. So I spent all my time trying to figure out online stuff and how to what I was going to do for the rest of my life. And I, and I did. And I quit. I actually took uh, paternity leave. And that, that here in Canada, that means you get six months. And you get, I think it's about, it was 80% pay. So I took that to, to transition fully to my real job which I do now. And uh, it was great. I remember the bank called me and they're like, Hey, well, six months is up. When are you coming back? And I was like, Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, I'm not ever coming back. So see ya. <laughs> and they're like, what do you mean? We will, you have to, I'm like, mm, no, I don't. I'm making like way more money doing what I'm doing. So I did quit. That's the best feeling in the world to be able to tell your boss. Yep. See ya. I'm out of here. Um, now sold over a million in physical products and counting sold, Close to that now in uh, coaching and courses that I do and boot camps that I run too. So I've done it all with Facebook ads. So I've, I've gotten really, really good at it. Uh, those who can't do teach, but not this guy. Okay. The only thing that I show people is stuff, like I said, I run experiments. I make sure it works and then I'll show it to people. But I'm spending my own money to figure it out. And I'm not really... I'm in the trenches right with people. So I'm not the kind of guy that just sits there uh, spouting theory. It's actually stuff that I practice. I practice what I pe preach, okay? So basically trained over 10,000 online marketers since 2007, and I noticed a lot of things, um, but one thing just keeps sticking out the most, and this might ring true with you, our mind. Um, our minds like to protect us, so they like to protect us from danger or pain or the unknown. Uh, our mind just will kind of take the, the path of least resistance in order to make sure that we don't get hurt and to make sure that we don't go and do something stupid, um, whether that be physically or emotionally or mentally or whatever it is, our brains, uh, they're always in protection mode. And so they react kind of with that at the forefront to any decisions that we're making, right? So our mindset uh, controls us. So just, that should say think, but think about when you woke up this morning, if you woke up and said, okay, today's gonna be a great day, then, guess what? Today's going to be a great day because you're in the right mindset and you're saying, yeah, there's problems, there's issues. There always are, but today's going to be a great day. I'm alive. I'm breathing. Got my family, got my friends, you know, it's going to be good. And then you know what? You're going to have a great day. The opposite. Well, I mean, today would be a great day because you woke up in a great mindset, but the opposite is also true. If you wake up in the morning and say, Hey, today's going to stink. Then guess what? Today will most likely stink because your mindset is negative. Our mindset is our own reality, but our mindset and our reality is not everybody else's reality. So just because we're having a bad day doesn't mean other people are. Just because we're having a good day doesn't mean other people are. Our perception of our day is a whole different ballgame because what we perceive as a bad day, somebody else might actually perceive as a good day. You know, like we take a lot of things um, for advantage, like... We wake up, we have a house, we have a roof over our head, food on the table, a nice family. Well, somebody who's homeless might think, wow, that guy's got it all. And we think, we look at somebody who's got, like, goes away on vacation for six months a year or something, has a helicopter, and we think, wow, that guy's got it all. So it really is perception. Um, mindset is so important. And one, one just real quick, and then I'll get to the training. 
Um, this Mel Robbins lady is fantastic. So I used to think mindset and, and all that stuff was baloney. And I used to think guys like Tony Robbins were full of crap. But this lady has this five-second rule. She actually has a book on it, and I highly recommend it. Um, I'm not an affiliate or anything, but the whole deal is before you make, before you respond or make a decision, do this. Count backwards from five to one. So five, four, three, two, one. Now respond or act. After that, what that five-second interval allows you to do is skip the emotional response you may have, and instead the logical side of your brain will kick in, and you'll actually make better decisions. And I have vouched for this 100% because with my wife, um, if we're getting heated in, about some topic, I actually, I've started to do this quite a bit because I know I'm reacting emotionally to her. So I need to count backwards. And she looks at me as if I'm kind of like, what's going on? Well, why aren't you saying anything? I'm like, I'm, I'm processing. And so that's what I do. I count backwards. So this lady, uh, she's an American on-air CNN commentator. I don't think she even does that anymore. I think she's now just a motivational speaker, but she's widely known for covering George Zimmerman's trial, whatever that is, and her book, The Five Second Rule. So just go to YouTube, Google her name, or search for her name. You'll see the little 22-minute um, speech she does on it, and then you can buy the book if you want, but it will literally uh, change your life. I swear to God, it's awesome. So that's my little part on mindset. I think it's the most important part and why would I talk to you about that? Well, with online marketing, mindset is the most important part of anything. So nothing else will affect your success more. I, I guarantee it. Like you could have all the tricks and tips in the book in the world, but it's not going to matter if you have a bad mindset, if you have a negative outlook, if you don't believe in yourself, it's not going to work. Okay. So, I mean, mindset, it, it did it for me and I'm still working on it to get even more powerful, but it really does. And it can for you too. Okay. So that's great. Let's dive into the training now, right? Because we're about 20 minutes in. Today, we're going to cover three things. And I, I think this is where you're going to get a lot of value out of this. Um, I went into as much detail as I could without trying to confuse people too much, right? So number one is how to pick the right niche. I mean, this is your starting point. So this is pretty vital to your success. If you pick the wrong niche, you're going to struggle no doubt about it. And I give you, there's three questions I'm going to give you that have to be answered with a yes in order to determine if the niche is right or not. Number two is how to run Facebook ads to your store in 2018. Um, I'm going to give you the one biggest tip, biggest turnaround, biggest difference maker uh, that I have in all my experiments. I'm going to give it to you tonight for free. Okay. Uh, number three, how to speed up your learning curve. So that's always a good thing to consider. The faster we can move, the faster we'll get to profitability and the more money we can pump back into it. Once the cash flow is positive, then it's all good, right? I mean, that's what we're here to do. We're here to make money with uh, an online store. So if we can speed up our learning curve and learn from other people's mistakes, that's going to help you. If you have questions, please do post them in the chat box as we go along. I'll glance over there every once in a while just to see what people are saying. And um, if I don't get to you, you can email me or you can post them in the in the free group too. I've, I've sent some emails out with some links to the free group in it, but literally you can go to Facebook right now, type in PPC coach, you'll see my page and my group. So the group is free. So let's go into this, um, how to pick the right niche. And I actually, um, somebody, one marketer put out this neat little infographic and I kind of picked it apart because he spelled it out perfectly. And what it did is it broke it down um, into four possible classifications for a niche. And I loved it because it really, he hit on everything. So I basically did my own version of it for you here tonight. I'm going to show it to you now. So classifications, when we're looking at niches, like what do I make my store about? Well, um, number one, well, there's four. So number one is job titles. I'm going to give you a bunch of examples of these two. Number two is interest. Number three is hobbies. Number four is activities, okay? So those are the four kind of 3,000 foot level classifications that you can use with a niche. And at the end, I'm gonna give you the three questions that you have to answer with a yes in order for the niche to be profitable. I've helped a lot of people and I've seen some people get into some really weird niches. And I'm thinking, well, for example, one fella, um, he said, 
I want to make stuff for high school art teachers. And I said, wow, that is very specific. Like, first of all, how many are there in, in like the US? How many high school art teachers are there? Like thousands, right? But compared to like a police officer or a fireman, there's very little. So I said, that's great. I said, okay, give it a shot. So he did. He put together, I think it was a coffee mug that he was selling. And um, it was selling really well. And he wanted to scale it. And you know what? He couldn't because the niche was so small. He hit everybody with that coffee mug in the niche. And a lot of people bought it. But he couldn't go big because the niche was too tiny. And compare that to a niche like one of the big ones that I, I really like um, is the wife niche. So you, people can buy uh, gifts for their wife. And that's huge because think of it, how many people in the U.S. alone, let alone the world, are married with a wife? And how easy is it to target married people? Well, Facebook has the relationship status of married. So when you plug that in, you instantly have like 50 or 60 million men that, that you can target who are married and they might buy it for their wife. Like it's just that compare that to like high school art teacher and you've got a huge difference in niches. So some niches do answer yes to the questions I'm going to give you, but they're not big enough for you to scale. So you don't really want to, you never want to build like say a full blown Shopify store for high school art teachers. I mean, you would have, you would probably dominate the market. That's not the point though. The market is too small for you to scale to gigantic levels. So that's something that it's a trade off, right? So let's go into job titles. Give you some examples that you can just so your the wheels start spinning for you. Um, you can look at dentists or teachers or nurses, coaches, you know, sport coaches. I'm thinking, although maybe life coaches, I don't know. Uh, farmers, engineers, vet, veterinarians, pilots, accountants, things like that. So back uh, a couple of years ago in the engineer niche, this fella he was an engineer and he had a Facebook page about engineer memes. And he created a shirt that said, trust me, I'm an engineer. And then on the back, it said, engineer, we fix problems you don't even know you have or something like that. And he sold thousands, like 20,000 of these T-shirts just to engineers. So that's a great niche for him because he was an engineer and he had a huge following already. But things like that are good compared to um, like coaches might be a little bit smaller. That might be along the high school art teacher um, vein. Whereas nurses, there's a lot of them. Teachers, there's a lot. Dentists, there's a lot. I'll tell you right now, though, teachers, it's a tough niche to crack, uh, mainly because of one of the questions I'll show you. Um, teachers just don't really have the money to spend. And I, I know a ton of teachers. I'm friends with them. My ex-wife was a teacher. My uh, current wife is a teacher, and I know them well. So even in Canada, where they make decent money, um, I know in the U.S. they don't really make much at all. So they're passionate about what they do, but they just don't really have the disposable income compared to someone like, say, a nurse or a dentist, right? A dentist has a lot. So let's move on to interests. And these are things, you know, like people are interested in this. So I put a bunch of animals in here, like chickens, cows, uh, guitars, musical instruments of any kind, really, cats, dogs. When you get into dogs, it's not just dogs. But you can actually get into the different breeds as well because the people are very breed loyal. Um, you know, poodle lovers love their poodles. Pit bull owners love their pit bulls. So if you try and sell a poodle owner a pit bull thing, they're not going to do it, right? So that's where you want to segment it down a little bit. Uh, biology, for example, which would be another like high school art teacher type thing that you probably want to want to avoid. But just as an example, psychology, video games, politics, tough to advertise now on Facebook. But it is a good niche, right? Coffee. People love coffee. I love coffee. Beer. Huge niche. Okay. Wine. And so now you can just start thinking, like, what products could I sell these people? Well, you can come up with some pretty cool um, designs in these niches and throw them up on your store. And they do really well because the people are passionate about them. So, like, wine lovers, they tend to have a little bit more money in general, like as a general statement. So... Um, if you can sell them something funny or something or a nice gift thing, they might like it. Now we move on to hobbies. These are things like uh, some of these might be considered sports, but uh, so reading, huge hobby. There's a big niche for um, book readers. A lot of t-shirts out there. If you're ever doing research, there's a lot. Running's huge. Hiking, 
stamp collecting. It, it is a bigger hobby than you'd think. Um, remote control cars. There's actually live streams now on Facebook for this stuff, like remote control car races. It's, it's nuts to even watch it. Uh, drones, scrapbooking is huge. And think of scrapbooking and sewing and knitting. These people are constantly buying products. They're constantly buying patterns and they're very creative and they make it. So they'll appreciate a very creative product to represent what they're passionate about. So great niches to be in. Uh, muscle cars, right? Think of muscle cars, guys. They spend their, all their time working on their cars and they're constantly buying parts. They're constantly upgrading. They're constantly tweaking it. They're constantly painting it. They're constantly doing all this stuff. That means they have money. Uh, just like four by four truck guys, they have a ton of money because those things cost so much, not only to build, but to run. It is insane. So here's a question coming in. Um, is it better to start with a general store or a niche? I used to say general. Now I say niche. Okay. Um, so New York teachers make a lot of money. Okay, cool. Uh, Nassau County, right on. Um, here's another question. So you would go for specific guitars or musical music musical to cover more instruments? Uh, no, if I did uh, the guitar niche, um, that would be my niche, guitars. So I wouldn't, when I'm targeting ads, I would go with like Fender or uh, whatever the brand names are for the guitars, right? I will do that for my ads, but my niche will be guitars. Yeah, there's things like motorcycles, dirt bikes, all that good stuff under hobbies, right? And there's money in them too. So the next one is activities, and this could be considered like sports too, but there's things like weightlifting, tennis, golf. Think of golfers. Like how much money do they spend on their memberships? And how much do they spend if they don't have a membership? I know I love golfing. And my clubs are, like, I think I paid 1100 which is cheap for clubs compared to some of these guys paying, like, two or three or five grand for a nice set. And they're going out all the time to their country club or whatever. Even if you go to a public course, it's not cheap. Like, it's about 50 bucks for you for 18 That's on the cheap side. So you go out, what, 10, 20 times a summer? Well, here in Canada, it's in the summer. That adds up pretty quick, right? So what I'm saying is golfers have money. And look at the pants they wear. They have a sense of humor too, right? Surfing, another big one. Basketball, baseball, softball, cycling, CrossFit. Um, CrossFit people are nuts about telling you they're into CrossFit. So they're very passionate. So if you can save them from having to tell people all the time and they could just kind of wear it on their shirt or wear it on some product they have, coffee mug, whatever, then it's a passionate niche. Now, the disposable income question is maybe, maybe not, but very, very passionate niche. Running is another passionate one. And yoga, you know, people are very passionate about these things. So that's there's a bunch of examples here. I mean, you could go to Google right now and you could say, uh, give me a list of all the sports out there. And you probably get a thousand plus sports that you could get into. Um, so you've got all these ideas. And now, like, what do you do? Like, that's just a really short list. I'm sure you can brainstorm more. Uh, those were just examples, like job titles. Go to Google and type in uh, different job titles or list of job titles. You'll get thousands and thousands of job titles that you could possibly create a niche store on and get into that niche, okay? So how do you sort them? How do you figure out what's good, what's not? Well, you go with three questions. So you have to answer these with a yes before you can confirm the niche is good to get into. And these are standard. I mean, some of the answers might be a maybe. If it's a maybe and you've got three yeses in another niche, go with the three yeses. Okay, so here they are. Um, first of all, number one, can you easily find these people on Facebook? And that's where I go back to the high school art teacher. They're difficult to find on Facebook because there's no real job title of high school art teacher that I know of. Maybe there is now, but there wasn't back then compared to, um, say, police officer. The police officers are easier to find than a high school art teacher, right? Or even looking at um, knitting. It's easy to find knitters. It's not difficult at all because there's so many knitting magazines, knitting blogs, knitting celebrities that you can target. Um, but there's other stuff that is, it's hard to find them. When you go to try and type them in there, it's like, hmm, I don't know. I don't know how to find them. If that's a no, then it's not a good niche right away. Number two, are they passionate about it? So 
people like teachers are very passionate about being a teacher because they love to to teach their kids and they, they get rewarded through that. Uh, police officers, very passionate. Firefighters, very passionate. Um, four by four truck guys, super passionate, right? Dirt bike guys, very passionate. That's what they do all weekend. So if they have the passion, it's a good niche. And here's, here's the one that separates a lot of them. So do they have the disposable income to buy things with? And that's where you go and you say, all right, let's look at, uh, I'll give you an example. If it's, well, first, if it's just yes all three, then it is a good niche. But um, let's look at this one. So I, I said video games. Well, so what's the answer, right? Can you easily find them on Facebook? Yeah, you can. Like, look at the most popular video game right now. It is definitely uh, Fortnite, which means it's easy to find. These, I don't know if I have kids, right? And they actually, <laughs> I can't believe they do this, but though these gamers now actually stream themselves playing the game. So they have them in the bottom corner, like left or right, watching their screen and they're on video, like their face while they play and they're talking. And then they're, their actual game is on the screen. And I'm like, I remember I walked in, my daughter showed me this. And I'm like, what the heck is this? You're watching somebody play a video game? She's like, yeah, it's awesome. I was like, why wouldn't you just play the video game? She goes, no, no, this guy's really good. I'm like, okay, but <laughs> I don't know. So it's like, it's like, a, like watching this stuff is now a thing. So are they passionate about the niche? Yeah. If you type Fortnite into Google or Facebook right now, you're going to get a million plus trillion results in there of all these gamers and all these guys on Twitch TV and all this stuff, which is just, it's a whole world that didn't even exist when I was growing up, but it now it does. And now they're very passionate about it. But here's the thing. Besides these top end gamers that are streaming stuff and have full merchandise and all that stuff, do a lot of the gamers have disposable income to buy things with? Maybe. So right there, the fact that it's a maybe makes it not the best niche in my mind to be opening up a niche store to. Now, if there's anybody on the call that has a video game dedicated store and can prove me wrong, I'd be happy to chat. I mean, exceptions do exist, but I think video games is an example of something that I wouldn't really pursue just because of the disposable income thing. When I think video games... I think more of people that are, you know, still living at home, maybe they're college students. They were super into these games. They're passionate. Uh, you can find them easily, but they just don't really have the disposable income to buy a lot of stuff with. Okay, so the disposable income is a little bit related, well, a lot related to age and uh, what life stage they're at as well. So if you look at poor college students, they're not going to have as much disposable income as somebody who's later on in years, right? So... I hope that helps from that. Um, yeah, a couple more guitar things coming in from Bernie here. Fender, Gibson, Martin, yeah. Yeah, the first rule of cross, CrossFit is to tell everybody you CrossFit. <laughs> and that is so true. Absolutely. Yeah, and most video games are bought by mom and dad, for sure. And you can't find people who hate anything like I hate cooking. No, that's true, Hale. It's hard to find that. Pester power from the kids. That's another thing, too. I mean, a lot of these toy companies, if you anybody watches the Disney Channel on TV, it is un, like if you want to see trendy toys that you could possibly put on a store for Christmas, just watch Disney Channel for you know, 30 minutes. You'll see every toy that's popular right now. And those kids, they do pester their parents. I can vouch for that. Good point. All right. So in my mind, video games are not the best option for a niche store. Okay, some may have disposable income, but I think other niches have more. That might be a little bit of a better choice. So does that make sense on the niche side? Give me a one in the chat box if you kind of agree or if you got anything out of that little list thing. Okay, I got a couple ones coming in. That's awesome. Cool. Good, good, good. All right. So do you think now that you can pick a good niche to give yourself a head start? You know, you should be nodding your head yes, because I just gave you um, the blueprint for picking a good niche, right? So people are making money doing this, and you can too, right? So here's two more, and the only reason I'm showing you this is there's no reason you can't. So I've got uh, my buddy Pierce, 
Uh, he hit 10,000 sales on his platform, Gearbubble, that I really like. And uh, so he's giving a shout out to the owner and me. And this is for one of my other programs, but I have Will has a fantastic program, spells it all out, all out for you. <coughs> Excuse me. So I really like that. But this, I mean, we go from 10,000 sales to got my first two sales from the process ready to scale. I like these both equally because I think when you get your first sale, if you haven't got it yet, you got to frame that. You got to print it out somehow and frame it because it's just like your first dollar when you open your store. Um, it's awesome. It's the best feeling in the world. So, so why, again, why am I showing you these people who took one of my courses to put you in the right mindset? Remember we talked about mindset and how important it is. And if you think other people are doing it, then you start to think, well, maybe I can do it too. And you're right. You're absolutely right. Anyone can do this. So do you think you can? I hope you're nodding yes. So let's go into number two, uh, how to run Facebook ads to your store in 2018. I'm basically going to give away the number one kind of change that's happened. And this has happened recently. And this is not this is not my theory on how it works. This is actually implementation in my own accounts and in the people. I coach people one-on-one -on -one as well. And we've done it. And it's proven time and time again to work. So I'm going to show you this. So basically, to start at the, again, 3,000 foot level, 30,000 foot level, you need three things. You need a store, right, to send your traffic to, obviously. You need a couple strategies to work with, and you only really need a small budget to start. Okay, once you have those three things, you can run Facebook ads successfully. So for the store, we're going to give ourselves a head start because we're going to start with a niche that should be good according to the criteria we've set and it's answered all the yes questions a couple strategies there's so many different ways to go about this and the thing is when i teach people strategies they'll work and then sometimes they'll fizzle out and that's where you got to pump in new strategies and that's where guys like me are constantly experimenting to come up with the best strategies that work, that work at any given time and then a small budget because people always ask me how much do i need to spend like how much do I need to spend to get profitable? I'm like, you could spend five bucks a day. It'll take you a while, but if you have the patience, you can do that. Once cash flow is not an issue, increase your spend. Because I mean, the goal with buying traffic is you have to spend money to make money. The more money you spend, the more money you can possibly make. You always want to be making more than you're spending. Otherwise, you're not going to be running paid traffic very long, right? So first thing, I don't have a store. Well, you make one, but I don't know any strategies. Well, you learn some right? But I don't know, <laughs> I don't have any money to spend. Well, if you're going to get into this, you got to scrape something together. I mean, it's it's tough, it's hard, but that's the way it's got to be, okay? So don't let your mind trick you, right? You can do anything you put your mind to, anything. And, well, maybe you can't fly by flapping your arms, but if you had like wings attached to them, maybe you could. So what's changed? That's a big question, right? A lot, a lot has changed with Facebook ads and especially the past like three months, even six months, um, a lot's changed. And, and so whenever that happens and campaigns start going downhill, I always go back to the lab and I start looking at uh, what's going on here. Um, what do I think is going to work? And then I put that into an experiment. And if the experiment works, then that's the new method I'm going to go with. Okay. So the thing that changed the most is the Facebook pixel. And this now this switched up things a few years ago. Um, so here's years ago, right? We used to have this thing called niche conversion, conversion pixels. And all a pixel is, it's just a little piece of code. And the piece of code goes on your website and it tracks when somebody views the site or page. It tracks when somebody adds something to the cart. And then it tracks when somebody buys something. So every time an event like that happens, that information is sent back to your ad account. It's sent back to Facebook and Facebook credits like here, this one got a view, this one got an ad, add to cart, this one got a purchase. That way you can see what your cost per purchase is, your cost per add to cart, your cost per view, right, of your pages. So a pixel is, it's not some magical fairy dust. It's a piece of code, okay? You're not going to break it. You're not going to damage it. But back a couple years ago, we had the ability to create a conversion pixel for each niche that we were in. So we could have one ad account and we could create a custom. Well, it's not even a custom conversion. Now they have custom conversions. Back then it was just a conversion pixel. Okay. So as we got more sales, our campaigns become 
more optimized, this still holds true. Back then though, that meant more profits. It still means more profits today. Facebook learned from the niche conversion pixel exactly who to target for our product. So this worked really, really well. We could even run ads without any targeting. So with just on the pixel, we could say, okay, here's my purchase pixel for this niche. Say it's knitting. Um, okay, Facebook, go find knitters. And they would just find it based on my pixel only. I wouldn't even have to put like knitting as an interest or use a lookalike audience or a custom audience or anything. Facebook, their old conversion pixel per niche worked so well that it would be able to do that. And that you could have one ad account and run multiple niches within it. It worked awesome. This worked awesome right up until about the end of 2017, to be honest, okay? Um, 2018 has still worked, but it seems that about, I don't know when it was, about a month ago or two months ago, um, they did another update. And whenever you see an update, it's basically a warning message in your ads manager. And it says, save your changes because there's gonna be a bunch of stuff coming in tonight or this weekend. So when you see that, you know they're doing some tinkering with the algorithm, which sucks because it means we're kind of back to square one. So Facebook in their wisdom, in order to streamline things, eliminated niche conversion pixels. They do have custom conversion pixels, but that's not the same thing, okay? Now, we thought that was fine. I still run my campaigns. Random, I still have, actually I have a couple running still with a generic pixel and they're, they're working but they're not as profitable as they used to be. I can see the profits fading a little bit. So they eliminated those niche conversion pixels. We all had to switch to one pixel per ad account. Okay, and that worked fine. And we could actually, we could run multiple niches off that one pixel and everything worked fine. Turns out we were doing it wrong. Okay, that means it doesn't work. It's not as effective as it used to be. So. Here's an example. So just picture this, kind of picture this in your mind. These people are doing it, but they're doing it wrong. Okay, so photography, he's got the camera backwards. He's a photographer, but I know this is just set up for it, but I thought it was funny. Uh, if you're spotting somebody, uh, you're doing it wrong, very wrong, right? That's not how you spot somebody. And taking screenshots, that's not how you take screenshots, right? So. We know that there's some mistakes being made here. Um, same with our Facebook ads. We know they're, you know, people are doing them, but they're just not quite doing them right. So do you want to do it right? I mean, of course you do. So here's the change. Instead of one ad account for everything, it's one ad account per store. With each ad account, you get a pixel, okay? It's one pixel per store. What this allows us to do is kind of go back in time a little bit. And we used to have custom or well, conversion pixels, purchase conversion pixels, right? And they worked awesome. This allows us to kind of go back in time and have that pixel, that one little number, that one little code dedicated to the niche. So it works so, so much better. Okay, so here's the old thing. One generic pixel is fine. This is, and I used to say this too, and this is Batman, not anymore, Robin. That's not the way it works anymore. And this is very, very recent that this change happened. So it's one pixel, it's now your niche pixel. And that's in one ad account dedicated to your niche. I would even go so far and say it's dedicated to your store. So every ad account you create, and you can create multiple in the business manager, just go to business.facebook.com, create a business manager account. Within there, I think they start you off with five ad accounts, but you can get more, all you have to do is ask. You send an email to support, they'll give you more ad accounts. Every ad account, I found this too, takes into account the URL, right? So if, say with Teespring, as I don't know if any of you are familiar with Teespring, but it's an old print-on-demand platform. And we, we were all sending traffic to Teespring. So Facebook sees a whole bunch of different ad accounts sending traffic to Teespring, a whole bunch of different niches, right? Like you name it hundreds and thousands of different niches go into one URL, one like main base URL. I think what happened was when they eliminated the um, conversion pixels, the unique ones, the pixels started getting confused. And it, it's not that it's a human, it's not that it can do that, but it, it relies on machine learning. So it's looking for patterns and it's looking for similar people to target with the ads. So if it's got hundreds of different niches 
pointing to one domain, it gets it gets starts getting confused and it can't it doesn't know who to who to show the ad to. Like besides the targeting, it doesn't it can't do its job effectively. So it's like running down the road or driving down the road and you get a flat tire, and some of these flat tires will run for like 80 kilometers on a flat, but you're not going to get very far. Eventually, you're going to have to pull over and change it. So that's what we're doing. This one pixel per store, per ad account, right? It replicates the performance of the old niche conversion pixels. And this is proven. This is not theory. This is what happens. So this one, one tweak to your campaigns will make a gigantic difference. Okay, so do you think this one change can make a difference? Just give me one in the chat box if you do. If you don't, put a two in there. I'm just waiting for ones. Well, those are old ones. Absolutely. Yeah, so I'm not just saying this as a guess. I'm saying this as I actually experimented with this. So for ages, I always said my one pixel and my one big ad account where I spend a ton of money works better than these niche ones. And now I've realized that it's because the niche ones were going to a generic domain that thousands of other people were sending information to and Facebook was getting confused. So now that I can take my own domain and I can run traffic to that in a niche, it works exactly as it's supposed to. So it's very cool. And that, that one change can make a gigantic difference. So what happens next? Well, like anything, I mean, this stuff is not easy the first time you do it. Um, with some help, do you think you could do it though? There's more to Facebook ads than just that one change, but apply any of the systems you're currently using, current strategies, with that one tweak, and I think you're gonna notice a big difference. Right away, it does take a little bit for Facebook to learn uh, who is a good buyer in your niche, but once they learn it, um, it's well worth the initial investment in the pixel, okay? So if only someone would put something together on this, Right, and I love this one. I don't always see what you did there, but when I do, it was just now. So, you know the one biggest change with Facebook ads. So let's look at the last part of the webinar now. It's how to speed up your learning curve. Now, wouldn't that be nice? Absolutely, I love learning. Learning is my favorite. I, I actually should change this to experimenting because I love experimenting. I just love uh, coming up with some theory no matter how bizarre or crazy it is and testing it. That's that I really enjoy that. It's almost more enjoyable than getting a good testimonial to me. So um, I love it. So you have two options, just like anything you learn. You know, first is you're gonna learn on your own, okay? Learning on your own is a long, hard path to take. So think of your job that you have right now if you're working a nine to five. Do you just walk in there and learn on your own? Mm, I doubt it. Probably had to go to school. Probably go to university, get a degree, and then that piece of paper said you knew what you were doing, and then you got your job, and then even then, you had to go through like maybe a couple of days or a week of on-the-job training to get the systems down and the processes and the culture and all that stuff. You could do it. You could do everything on your own. It's just a long, hard path. Number two is watching someone do it and asking questions along the way. What I relate this to is jobs where they have apprenticeships. So you have like a mentor guy. So I used to work construction in the summers and uh, the bricklayers had laborers and the bricklayers also had, I was a laborer, and the bricklayers also had apprentices. And what they were doing was they were literally, the apprentice would watch and then the apprentice would do, and then the, the uh, bricklayer would say, no, don't do that, do this. Well, here's why you do that, don't do that. Move that here, don't use that mix. Make sure you scrape that right. Um, use your level, use your lines, all that stuff. And the apprentice would be asking questions along the way. Same with electrical stuff, right? Same with a lot of jobs. Even I was a financial advisor and I worked for Edward Jones. We spent three weeks in St. Louis, Missouri, um, learning the technical side of the office and the business and all that stuff and how to prospect. Then we came home and we spent three weeks with a mentor in an existing office, seeing it actually function on the job. So I went through six weeks of training to become a financial advisor six weeks that it took and that was after having a business degree and all that other stuff so i had to watch someone do it in order to learn there's no way i could walk into that job day one and go okay i'm a financial advisor um let's do business no you have to watch someone do it so which one seems best to you 
Just give me a one or two in the chat box right now. I'm just trying to see if you guys are still awake. I know we've got a lot of people on there. Uh, one. Okay. So there was a question. Do they take URL shorteners as one domain? I believe they do. I firmly believe they do. So if you have Bitly or the Google one that's supposed to be disappearing in a couple months, I guess. I don't think it's doing any any good for your Facebook ads. I think Facebook wants to see the URL be the same one as where they end up. So otherwise, they probably think something funky is going on, which a lot of black hat guys are doing. Um, so I know it shortens it on the on the ad in the description, but I don't think it's the best route to take. Okay, so a lot of oh, there are ones and twos. One, one, no two. <laughs> okay, there's a two. A couple twos, good. So watch someone do it and ask questions along the way, right? You learn from others who have already made all the mistakes. Now, would you do this? Now, just humor me for a second. Um, say you want to become a pilot, right? So you get in your plane and you whip out the manual and you start reading it. And you go, do, do, do. Okay, so how do I launch this thing? How do I steer this? How do I how do I um, get in the air? What, what buttons do I push? What do I do here? Well, it's got to be in the manual, so I'll just read that. No, no, you wouldn't do that. That doesn't make any sense. Would you learn by reading about it? You'd learn a bit, but there's no way you could read about being a pilot and then hop in a cockpit of a jet fighter and take off. No way. You need more. So first, you go to flight school to learn the technical stuff, right? Second, you go up with a pilot a lot to get real world on the job training, right? And then you become one after you take a test and pass your certifications and all that stuff. So why do we think online marketing is any different, okay? Online marketing is the same. You speed things up by watching others do it and getting help along the way. Reading about success is not gonna make you successful. So I know this because back in the day, about five years ago, I lost 100 pounds, 106 days. I followed a routine and a diet. I didn't lose it all overnight, but um, I had help because I had somebody give me the diet that I was supposed to run. And I had help because I had actually read well, I've been working out for years, like lifting weights, so I kind of knew that part from experience. But I did start by reading a book, and then I went to the gym and figured out my routine, and that's one that I did. So I was doing that, get, dropped a lot of weight. People are like, you look fantastic. So people saw that success. They thought it was easy, but really it's not. It, typically, it looks like this, right? It's an iceberg. So people see the top 10%. They miss the bottom 90%. So they never really see the failure, the setbacks, and naysayers. That's your friends and family who say, stop trying to do this. Go get a job. There's doubts. There's hard work, more hard work, failures, sacrifices, risks, late nights, early mornings, courage, persistence, and action. They don't see that part. So when you see a big screenshot on Facebook of somebody's store, you see the top, but you never see the bottom. So to speed things up, again, just reiterate, watch someone do it and ask questions. So does that make sense? Give me a quick one there in the chat box if you agree. Everybody agrees? Good. So where do you find this? Well, I'll get to that in one minute. Mentoring. It speeds up your learning curve. Okay. Here's two examples. These people have been mentored. So Jay, okay, got his first sales with a course of mine. Um, so he followed the process. He found me. We helped him. Another one here. I uh, just want to say that this was my Engraving Profits course. Really inspiring. She went through a lot. Um, so this first course from me. Super excited to see how things go from here. Thanks for putting this together and making it easy to follow. So that's key too. You want to make sure it's easy to follow. So I know when I started, I found a mentor. He showed me the ropes. So it's like anything in life. You learn first from people who know how, right? There's all the stuff we learn from others. Walking, riding a bike, our job, parenting, a million other things that we learn. So what if there was someone who could help you learn, right? You listen to them. What if you could watch? What if you could ask questions? Would that help you out? So one question here, are you enjoying the webinar so far? I hope you're all nodding yes. Do you think this can work for you? I hope you're nodding yes. Here's what we've covered, okay? How to pick the right niche, how to run Facebook ads to your store in 2018. The one big tip that's gonna be huge for all of you if you implement it, how to speed up your learning curve. So who wants to take it to the next level? Just put I'm ready in the chat box now. And I'll wait. I think a lot of you know what's coming anyway. I'm ready. I'm ready. Ready, ready, ready. Cool. Good, good. So here's what I've got. Okay. Um, PPC Coach, that's me. Shopify and Facebook ads. Follow along. 
this isn't a boot camp. This isn't a course. This is me doing it, you watching and asking questions, okay? So those info and methods that I've shown only scratch the surface, right? Not even a dent. But this Shopify and Facebook ads follow on is all about this, showing you exactly what to do, showing exactly how to do it, mentoring you and getting you profitable because you're going to watch me do it and you're going to ask questions. And then when you do it, you'll have seen it all done already. It's very cool. So what is it? It's me starting from a new store from scratch with a new ad account. You watch and ask questions along the way. I document everything in video format and it's perfect. So what are you getting? Well, you get a lot. So you get the Shopify and Facebook ads follow along. So you're going to watch me build a brand new Shopify store from scratch, like seriously, buy the domain, everything, all the excruciating details that everybody wants. And I just went through, before I put this program together, I did it myself. I put a new store together and man, I forgot how involved it was to put together a store. Like there's, there's even stuff that I missed and I had to go back. I had to loop back because I'm like, Oh yeah, I forgot to do that part. Oh, I didn't add that yet. Oh, I forgot to do that. And I'm like making my little checklist and now I'm like, okay, this is good. This is working. Um, then the cool part is, I mean, you have a store that's wonderful, but you have to get people to look at it. So you can watch me create Facebook ad campaigns for this. Here's the real kicker. Nothing's blurred out. Okay. You know, when sometimes you see training, a lot of it's blurred out. So you can't see exactly what they're doing or exactly what interests they're targeting or exactly what the product is. This, you get to see it all. Then you can apply this to your own, your own niche, your own store, your own products, your own campaigns. So this is, it should be like $10,000, but I put a, a total value of $19.97. I've got two bonuses for you, but first, just three questions for you. First of all, how much you spend on Starbucks every month if you go there? Okay, for me personally, it's super expensive. I don't really go there that much. I go to a place called Tim Hortons, um, but, I know that a grande Americano with, uh, I get a double-double, is like $3.10 for a large, basically a large coffee. I don't even get the fancy ones. If you got two per day, I actually get about three per day from Tim Hortons for a lot less, but that's about six twenty per day times 30 days. That's $186 per month. How much do you spend eating dinner out? So let's say $100 per dinner times two dinners per month. It's 200 bucks per month. And that's probably on the low end for a lot of people. When I take my family out, it's more like 150 now because there's, man, I got to use my fingers, seven of us now. How much do you spend on the movies per month? So you go once, two tickets, popcorn and drink, 75 bucks at least. I know when I take my family, the whole family, it's about $130, $140 to take everybody to the movies. And that's with like getting kids combos. Point is, um, what do you pay for that with? Well, disposable income. We talked about disposable income before. Everybody's got some. We all have it. It, it. That's what we spend on our entertainment and things outside of, you know, the bills and the mortgage, stuff like that. What if you took some of that and invested in your future instead? That would be pretty cool, right? So here's another bonus. Number one um, is a 60-plus Facebook ads for beginners video course. Easily $19.97 value. So if you only got that, would it be worth it? I think so. There's kind of a summary. They follow along the course, $3,994. I have one other bonus for you, but first, one question. Um, well, actually, the bonus is here. I screwed up my order, my my slides. So bonus number two is access to a mentor who knows the ropes. So that's a $3,000 value, which is what I currently charge for one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you get my undivided attention, and you get to watch me do it. That's a huge value right there. That's a big bonus. Um, so that's what you're going to get. The follow along, the video course, and that should say the um, mentoring from me, $3,000 value. So you're at $6,994 so far. So you've got two choices. Don't do nothing. Don't take the leap, leap of faith. Go back to whatever you're doing and uh, have a nice life, basically, where you can pony up a small amount of money. So compared to what you'd spend doing this on your own, it's invaluable. Okay, so it's almost decision time. Um, Here's the two types of people, Lazy Larry eating Cheetos, playing his video games, not doing anything, and then take action. Ted, fist pump champion of the world, these are the people I want, all right? So here's the take action, Ted. Started a test campaign a few hours ago, had her first, uh, his first shine on sale. So another course that I did. I love those posts, right? They make me happy. Information alone, 
is not going to help you like we talked about, but watching someone do it will help you out. Asking questions along the way will help for sure. So I put together a package that's going to over deliver on value big time. You're going to love this. It's on you and you really are going to love this. So I had a choice to make again. Do I sell it for cheap or do I make it really expensive? Well, I went the cheap route, super, super cheap this time, super cheap. Remember we talked about disposable income? You're going to laugh at this. Combined value, $6,994. You can see why it's a good deal. But today, because you showed up on the webinar, seriously, $49.99. This is a monthly membership. This is for the PPC Coach site where the follow along is taking place. It's already started. Okay, that well, there's two videos in there. But you go there, ppccoach.com slash join. It is a monthly membership fee. It's $49.99 a month. So that would be like $600 a year if you stay for 12 months. I should raise this price by a lot, but I, I've found this has worked over the years. You can cancel at any time too. So if you join, stay for a month, get a lot of information, get a lot of help, and you're like, nah, I'm good, you can cancel. You're not locked in. It's not like a cell phone. So now it's a red pill or blue pill time. Take the blue pill, story ends, wake up in your bed, believe whatever you want. Take the red pill, stay in Wonderland, show you how deep the rabbit hole goes, right? Go there. It's actually, if you go to the main site too, it's on there. Um, if you have questions, please post them in the group or email me, whatever you prefer. Let's let's get started. Um, the thing is starting in a couple days. Right now I have an intro video for the follow along and a niche video. So I'm kind of asking for input right in the follow along on what you guys think I should do for the niche. I have some in mind, but I want to see what you guys come up with. There's already been two suggestions in there. Um, so I'm going to go with, I'm going to pick one and I'm going to go with it, right? So what's the difference between now and later? Like now you might be struggling, later you won't be. You're going to watch me do this. You're going to watch me scratch my head. You're going to watch me screw up. You're going to watch me fix it. You're going to watch me launch campaigns. You're going to watch me curse. You're going to watch me uh, jump for joy when I get a super profitable product. All that good stuff. All I ask is you don't copy me. That's all. This is everything you need to go from zero to profits, just like I promise. Okay. If you have other questions, email me. Here's some common questions I get all the time. How is it delivered? It's on my membership site, which is a dedicated forum. Okay. This is a, you can view it on mobile, tablet, desktop, whatever you prefer. It's, there's videos. And then right below the video, you can post a question and you'll get me responding. And you'll get other people chiming in too with our help. So it's just a huge group of like-minded people that are getting mentored all together. It's awesome. It's, it, this is a really powerful way to learn. Okay. So why a follow along? Why not a boot camp or a course? Well, you're actually going to watch me do it, learn from my mistakes. And hopefully, hopefully it motivates you to do it on your own too. I know people love to watch and I don't know, not a lot of them like to take action, but I'm hoping when they see me do it, they get pumped and they go, man, I can do that too. And then they start one. And then they, if they do the follow along on the forum, it's optional. There's a section for the, for you to do that too, if you want, or you can just come in and be a lurker and just watch. So what if I don't learn anything new while well, you're going to, because there's new stuff I haven't shown before. Okay. Are there any other costs? Not for me, just $49.99 per month. Cancel at any time. Remember, you're following along. Now, if you do open up a Shopify store, you got to pay Shopify. If you're on Facebook ads, you got to pay Facebook. That doesn't go to me. Okay, so my only fee, $49.99 per month. What if I have no experience? That's awesome. I won't have to break a bunch of bad habits, which makes me happy. Do I get lifetime access to the follow along? Well, as long as you're a paying member of the site. This is a paid monthly membership site. So if you're paying, you're in. When you cancel your membership, you're out. That's the way it goes. Just to be clear, is the follow along right for me? Well, do you want to watch somebody do it? Do you want to get some help? If so, yeah, it is. If you don't, then no, it's not. Is it too late to start? No, this isn't centered around a holiday. This is a year round store. This is like an evergreen store in a niche that we're going to, yeah, we'll definitely run holiday specials and holiday sales, but it's going to operate 365, right? So it's never too late. Where can I go to get more questions answered? In the group, facebook.com slash groups, PPC Coach Group. You can also email me, ppccoach at gmail.com. But I'd really like you to go there and get started now. Okay, this is pretty much the cheapest training you have access to. 
This is a way to get my undivided attention. And not only that, I'm going to over deliver on value. The, like I could wrap up this fall along and sell it for easily $500,000 when I'm done. Okay, so you're going to get everything right now. Um, this is the kind of thing I wish was available when I started. Now, I had a mentor who had some training, but it was more, it was actually, it was delivered on a forum, but there was no videos at the time. There's no real way to do it. Bandwidth was always an issue. Like we were talking like super slow internet connections back then. Now with the, the technology we have, it's so easy for me to whip up a video, post it, show you what I did show you, you know, take questions, answer them. It's just, it's a perfect delivery system. I can't run this on a Facebook group because um, you have to have the ability to ask questions right below the actual video. And sometimes I found that Facebook videos don't work very well um, on a tablet, like on an iPad. Sometimes the sound doesn't come through properly. So anyway, I've been doing this site for years. Like this is year 11 for the site. And it's gone through a lot of iterations. And I think the follow along route with the site and the mentoring is going to get a lot of success stories coming out. And that's my goal. My goal is to have everybody who joins become the next success story. And I want to hear about it when it happens, 100%. So with that, um, if anybody has any questions, post them in there and I'll answer them. There's a couple in here that I'll go through. Other than that, that's a wrap. Um, so let's just scroll up a little bit. Do, 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 do. Okay. Yeah, Bernie's saying I could have learned to fly. No balls. <laughs> I actually, I looked at getting a helicopter pilot's license, and then I realized how little I would actually use it, so I didn't get it. But I've always wanted to be a helicopter pilot. I thought it was cooler to just, like, hover. So I, for one of my birthdays one year, um, my girlfriend, uh, now, like, wife, she bought a helicopter ride for me. Uh, it was awesome. It was so fun. And the guy let me fly it for like a minute. And then he's like, keep looking at the horizon because I kept dipping down. Uh, just natural for your arms to go down, I guess. He's like, no, no, watch the horizon. Don't look down. I'm like, but I want to look down. I'm hovering over all this cool stuff. Anyway, um, hard work pays off in the long run, but laziness pays off now. Yeah, I guess the immediate benefit to laziness is you get to sleep or whatever you get to do. Uh Thomas doesn't go to coffee shops. Gotcha. Very little as kids move out. Gotcha. Yeah, if anybody who's already signed up to the membership site, you do not have to do it again. You're already in, so you get access to this. Um, but as soon as you sign up, you will get instant access to the whole forums. So you get that course. You're getting the follow along. Uh, you're getting a ton of value for the price. I mean, it's almost too cheap but I want to get as many people as I can in there because I really enjoy that delivery system and I really want to create a lot of success stories. So sometimes the boot camps I run are a little bit expensive and I can't get as many people as I want in there. So this is a way to deliver to the people who can't really afford the higher end coaching. So that's why I'm doing it. It's all to help as many people as possible. Uh, here's another question. Do you use long, long sales pages like click funnels um, for physical products? Um, no, I don't use ClickFunnels. There is another tool that I'll show you that is similar to ClickFunnels, uh, but it's not ClickFunnels. It's right on your store instead. You could use ClickFunnels for physical products. It's just a couple extra steps. And I guess uh, they have integration with Shopify now, but I've heard it's a little bit clunky. So you could use a program like Zapier uh, in order to take the order from ClickFunnels to your store. But again, that's an extra step and an extra cost too. So there are some alternatives to that. Right on, Thomas is in. Hale's already in, that's awesome. How long will the offer be open if we are unable to join until next week? This, it'll be open for basically ever. Uh, I wish I could put a scarcity on this, but I'm not gonna lie to you and say there is one. There's no cart closing on this. Um, what may happen is uh, there might be uh, trial offers in the future, but that won't be for a while. So it's basically $49.99 per month. If you want to get in at the start of the follow along, which I'd highly recommend, then get in there now so you won't miss anything. Uh, but it will be on the on the forums. It'll just be harder to catch up if you join later. Uh, do you go over Google Ads in this one? I'm going to go over Google Shopping. So that's uh, part of the plan. So it's going to be Facebook ads and Google Shopping. So the PLA, product listing ads. 
that I will cover. Um, and it's not as difficult as people think. And when you have a niche store, it's actually pretty easy because your feed is all in that niche anyway. So it's a, it's way easier than have to, having to worry about collections and all that thing on Shopify. So that's why the niche store is a benefit too, not only with the advertising on Facebook, but with the advertising on Google as well. So a lot of cool stuff that you're going to see that maybe you haven't seen yet anywhere else. Um, and Google is divided into the free part, which is Google Shopping, and then the product listing ads, which is AdWords. But they both rely on the product feed from the Shopify store. Uh, same with Facebook. I'm going to show dynamic product ads, which is something that nobody really shows, but they're so powerful that I'm going to go through that um, pretty much in detail. And that just relies on a feed from your Shopify store. You have to basically upload your feed to Facebook, and then you can run ads um, based on a lot of different criteria um, dynamically. So you, instead of creating an individual retargeting campaign, and then in, like if they viewed the page but didn't buy, that's one per product. And say you got like 50 products on there, that's a lot of individual campaigns you would have to set up. The dynamic product ads eliminate that. So now you could set up the dynamic product ads and it will it keeps track of what page they visited or if they added to cart or if they viewed it or if they bought. And it will show the ad to the right person with the right product automatically. So it saves a ton of time. All right. Uh, oh, a couple more questions. What Shopify plan do you recommend? Start with a beginner one. However, um, there is a program in there called Better Shipping, the Better Shipping app that I do recommend. And this app is only, it's available for free. No, it needs real-time carrier shipping. To enable that, it's a fee per month, or if you pay for Shopify for a year, they'll add it for free. So what I suggest is just pay for Shopify for a year, because you actually do save a lot of money on the monthly costs too in doing that. So you'll see that in the training too, I go over that. Uh, Optimize Press, no, I don't use that. And it is expensive. What's expensive? Oh, having your own store? Well, you do have to pay for your store, but I mean, the point is to make more money than you're putting out there, right? So yeah, you do have to spend money to make money. Are the classes once a week or what? It's gonna be updated every couple days with, with a new video. So it'll probably take about two months, honestly, to go through this whole thing. Um, but the first part is like set up in detail, preparation, setup. Uh, then we get into products like design and where, where I recommend for fulfillment, um, how to get products done up quick and professionally, um, or you can do them yourself, whatever you want to do. If you like doing products, you can do them. If you don't, you can outsource it. And then we get into the marketing side. So that whole thing, that's why I want to put it into a follow along so you can see step by step kind of what you need to do in order to get profitable. Have you ever used Facebook for ClickBank products? No, I never have. Oh, ClickFunnels is expensive. Yeah, it is. I'm on the uh, $97 a month plan, and so that's like 1200 a year. Um, now, I've more than made that back with ClickFunnels, um, but it is an expensive program. There's other ones that have one-time fees like Profit Builder that are really, really good, and they're a good competitor, and they go right on your domain. And it's uh, like a WordPress plugin. So if your domain has WordPress on it, it's very easy to use. And I like the one-time fee for it. I, th I can't remember how much it was, 197 or 297 total. And then you get upgrades and everything. So there's trade-offs to everything. Um, if a program is making you money, you're going to stay with it. Like me, $49.99 a month. If you're following along, you're getting value out of it, you're not going to cancel your subscription to my membership site. If you're getting nothing out of it, you're going to cancel because you're going to be like, well, there's nothing new. There's nothing going on. I'm out of here, right? So if the value is there and you're making money using the information or using the system or using the software, you're going to stick with it. So ClickFunnels even has that $2.97 a month thing for uh, unlimited, I guess, pages and funnels and action edits or something like that. But um, I've found the $97 a month is fine. I don't even really need it, but I just kind of wanted – you know that two comma club thing they have? Well, I, I, my goal was to kind of get to that as quick as possible, but I, now I'm thinking, eh, I don't, I don't know. You, you flip flop on that all the time. 
So anyway, um, I'm not going to keep you guys on here talking about ClickFunnels. It's a good program, uh, but I use it more for my um, courses and uh, boot camps and that kind of thing than physical products. But there are programs that you can use for physical products. I think the cost is about the same, but these programs have a one-time fee option too, which I would just join for the monthly, get it working, and then if you're profiting, then dump, then switch over to the one-time fee which is possible, but that's getting ahead of ourselves. So I hope everybody's in there. Um, I know people are still sticking around. That's great, but it is now about, uh, we're about an hour and 15 in, so I'm going to close it off. So I have a uh, basketball game to go watch that I've been taping. I appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you. Thanks, Barbara. Appreciate it. Bernie, Thomas, everybody who came on. I, uh, there will be a replay too. Yep. You'll be coming out. Marion, thanks for coming out. Other side of the world. That's awesome. We will talk to you guys soon. If you have any questions, send me an email or post it in the group. Have a great night now, and we'll see you later.